Hello everyone, uh, in today's tutorial we're going to be diving into virtual production tools and experimenting with real-time camera tracking using the Intel RealSense T265. So I managed to secure one of these devices recently and thought why not see if I can still be useful uh, for virtual production in 2025. So it was discontinued several years ago but you can still pick them up um, in the used sort of market and that's exactly what I did. So when I went to use it with Unreal Engine, um, I subsequently found that it was uh, the plugins had sort of stopped working with it since about uh, Unreal 5.1. So I decided to put myself to task and try to get the plugin updated for a more recent uh, version of Unreal, like 5.5. So I believe I've managed to do that. Um, so I want to just test it and see how it can be used as an affordable camera tracking solution. So in this tutorial we'll cover all aspects of getting the camera up and working so that'll include downloading the SDK, it'll include downloading uh, the right version of Python and subsequent tools that you need to make the camera work. We'll then take the T265 in the Unreal Engine and we'll set up LiveLink uh, and get the data used as a virtual camera. So if you're working with LED walls, AR or motion capture this could be a great low cost way to experiment with tracking in Unreal Engine. So let's jump in and see what this little device can do. So I have now opened a, a web browser uh, to the link that I've included in the description. That is to the GitHub that I've set up for the project. Here uh, where you're going to download the plugins and the Python files that you're going to need to get all this working. So in this uh, GitHub site, You'll see here that there's a whole list of various versions of the plugins and you can see here these are the original versions of the plugins from the original creator of the project. So they're working on 4.26 and then up to 5.1. So I would just like to say thanks to Bjark Arkard who originally created the, the plugin. I have just forked from that original project and then did the subsequent uh, requirements to get the plugin working for, for the newer versions of Unreal. So uh, York had originally included versions for 5, 4.26, 4.27 uh, and originally supplied the uh, Python file as well. So we still need these um, and if you want to use earlier versions of Unreal please feel free to use York's version of the, the, the plugin. Um, however, for to get it working for 5.5, there are specific um, versions that I've found will, will keep the, the project working. So um, in here, the first steps we'll need to do is download the Intel RealSense SDK. So that is the thing that actually makes the camera work uh, within your Windows environment. So following these instructions, make sure you download uh, these uh, 2.5 version. This was one of the last versions of the SDK that actually worked with the Intel T265, so it's quite specific, so please make sure you download this. If you download a newer version of the SDK, uh, this will probably not work because the uh, camera was not supported in those. So just follow that, make sure it downloads, and once you do that, follow the instructions, quite simple, you'll get this software um, appearing. So this is your Intel RealSense. What you do is then plug your camera into your motherboard. Please ensure you use like a USB 3 connection, ideally the one on the motherboard at the back of your PCs, because those are the ones who are typically best powered and are more reliable. So I have mine plugged into the motherboard. And as you can see here, under the RealSense here, it's finding uh, the actual camera. So just to see it in action, we can grab it here quickly. Um, <clears throat> turn it on and you can see that it's finding all the data we can switch to 3d 2d and it does all the business so we know that it's actually being picked up by windows the other way to check to see if it's being picked up by windows is also to just come down to your wire here just check your devices and you should see it uh, attached there uh, as a device so that's all good what i would ensure you do is make sure this is not running and once you start using Unreal and the Python script, typically you can only run one instance of the camera being in use. Um, if you have this running in the background, it may cause uh, the Unreal side of things not to work. So just make sure that either you just don't open it or you close it. So now that we've downloaded the, the version of the SDK, 
we also need to get a version of Python uh, up and running. So the specific version, I'm sticking with the one that Bjork had um, back a number of years ago. So it's Python 3.7.9. Uh, I think it's up to Python 3.13 as of today, but um, you can install multiple versions. But so the version I'm running this project on is that one there, 3.7.9. So again, once you go to install the Python script, just run it from this um, link here. That'll download it from the executable. And when you get the install option, please make sure that there is an option to say add Python to path. So just give that a little tick so that that's enabled and then subsequently finish off the installation process. So once Python's been installed, we then need to install uh, PyRelease2. And again, it's this specific version. So through trial and error recently, I've found that this is the version that seems to hold well with Unreal 5.5. So again, how do we get that running? Well, we simply open the command window. So we have a command window and then you simply take this and then just copy and paste it like I've already done here, just into the window here. Oops, I don't want it twice. So once you do that, put it in there, hit return, and then on your machine, it will subsequently install the exact version that you need. Okay, so now that we have done that, we have installed the SDK, we've installed the right version of Python, and we have installed the right version of the, the Pi real sense too uh, as well so from there we then need to go back up uh, into the github and what you're going to do is download the version of the plugin that you're going to be using for this example today i'm using 5.5 so simply click on that and then you'll get an option here um, which should work fine if you just click on view raw it'll come up what do you want to do and i'm just going to say save as and this is the project that I'm going to put it into. So I'm just going to put it into my ICVFX plugins folder. So again, make sure a plugin is put into your plugins folder. And we simply hit save. Okay. So once we've saved, we can jump in, look at the folder. So we're in the plugins folder. And all we want to do is extract it to that exact place. So I'm just going to right click, extract all. And then just give it the name. And hey, presto, like that. And now we can delete the, the zip version. So now we have actually put the plugin, and you can see all its uh, files within here. Um, just to be safe and sorry, I'm actually, yes, that, that should be fine. Okay. So we've got that. Uh, and then. Uh, Next, we're going to actually jump into Unreal and ensure the plugin, etc., is enabled, and then we're going to get the live line thing all up and running. With all the tools set up now, um, we now jump into Unreal Engine. So, after launching the ICVFX project, we come into the editor. So, the first thing we have to do is ensure that all the appropriate pl the plugins itself has actually come through after adding it into the plugins folder. So, to do that, we can simply come up to edit plugins and at the top here then we just type in live link and just scroll up the top and you can see here the json live link enhanced plugin that we have created uh, and put into our plugin folder is actually there and just ensure that you have a tick enabled against it uh, so that means it's turned on and similarly for live link itself okay the other ones you may want to enable as you go along here if you're interested in uh, in display those sorts of things are live like for in display live like camera you may want to enable those as well so once you do that you can see here on my machine they're already enabled but if you were on yours and you tip uh, ticked against it you'll have a just say yes and then you'll have to restart so once you restart um we'll come back into the editor and then we'll be at a point to actually start to configure the, the plugin itself. Okay, so now we need to get this thing called the Live Link up and running. Um, this is the utility within Unreal that uh, checks for signals coming into the engine and it can do stuff with the data that it finds. So if you're not seeing it here like I already am, if you come up to Window under Virtual Production, 
you should see an option now for live link if you've enabled it under those plugins successfully. So just simply click on it and what we need to do now is add a source. So the source that we're looking for and it should be appearing down here for you because you've enabled the plugin for JSON live link. Um, so we'll just come in here and then we'll update the IP address to something like 127.0.0.1 and then have a colon 54321 is the actual port number. So it's quite specific. So it's important that you remember this number because it's the number we're going to have to use in the Python script as well. So simply click on OK and you can see now that it's, it's trying to receive some sort of data. So in order for it to receive the data we need to execute a Python script which will send the signal from the RealSense in the Unreal Engine. So if you recall under our uh, GitHub there was actually a file called uh, tracker.py so I want you to make sure you've downloaded that and it's important where you remember you download it to be it your downloads folder or the actual Unreal project. So you simply come in here and then you can download it uh, as such. Okay so once you've got that uh, downloaded into your onto your PC somewhere we need then to execute it. So that's the reason why Python was installed. It's going to execute these scripts for us. So if I go on to my command window I know that I downloaded that tracker pi file to my downloads folder. So I'm just going to navigate to it um, so my downloads folder so within the download folder I know that that scripts are so if I go to pi tracker.py okay so another important thing is as I mentioned was this IP address so we need to make sure that the IP address that we we put into the Python script the tracker script matches what we have put in here so under the command prompt if I just type in 127.0.0.1 and I'm just going to hold the camera in front of me here because this is almost like it's its origin start point then uh, and once I hit return on it here enter you can see now that the uh, live link updated and it now sees this MH track thing but notice what's happened so we can minimize, don't close, just minimize this window. So that's running in the background. So now we know that there's a signal successfully coming in because this is turned green. So if this doesn't turn green or it's, it's like an orange, then it means your camera's not being detected properly. So we'll ensure you're, you've installed all the correct SDKs, Python uh, and by Reels, uh, RealSense files. Make sure you're connected to USB 3. Uh, make sure the real sense intel software isn't running so ensure all that's done um, fingers crossed if you follow that then this should turn green so with that done um i you can see when we move it nothing in the unreal scene is actually moving in tandem with it so in order to do that i have this thing called the cine camera in here so i've simply selected onto it and what we need to do is add a new component to this actor so I'm going to simply click add and this time we're going to look for a thing called live link controller. So now we've got that in there. Uh, I can just bring it up here. Um, and when we added that component, you can see the panel below here updated then for various other bits and pieces associated with live link. So the thing that we're looking for is this MH uh, track. So I'm just going to drop under subject representation and you should see MH track. And look at that. So now that when we move our camera, we have now successfully got the Intel RealSense 265 successfully running in Unreal Engine. So I, I hope that was a useful little tutorial to get this old camera working. Uh, it does seem like a, a great little device. Um, I'm going to have some more experimentation on it and fingers crossed I'll maybe be back with a further tutorial maybe on getting it used within an actual virtual production uh, project or an in-camera VFX project using InDisplay. So 
thanks very much uh, hopefully you enjoyed that any questions just put them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to get back to you